Uh, we Thank will you. now uh, move to Just Equal Australia and Equality Australia, and I welcome representatives from those groups. Thank you so much for taking time to give evidence today. I'll now mm -hmm. give the call to Senator Bragg. Oh, thanks, Chair. Um, uh, I just wanted to thank you very much for making your time available today. Um, are we able to hear from uh, Councillor Zan Progno? Yes, thank you, Senator, and thank you, members of the committee. Um, I'm here this morning to testify that Christian schools can and do sack teachers for force of their sexuality. I was one. Karen and I represent just two examples of very many of this phenomenon. I have to say I don't relish being here because what I need to relate is a source of trauma for me. But the goading of friends and the pricking of my conscience means that I can't not speak out. I worked in a variety of private Christian K-12 schools uh, in the Sydney area for 20 years. They tended to be non-denominational Protestant schools who share a banner like Christian Schools Australia, and I note that you took testimony from Mark Spencer from that peak body yesterday. Schools that are typical of thousands of such schools across Australia. Now, I have to tell you that over the years, I have seen other staff sacked because of their uh, sexuality. In my own case, at the school that I worked at, the headmaster would casually say in a staff meeting, oh, well, I wouldn't employ a gay teacher. And I would shrink into the corner and a part of me would die inside. The chief PDHPE teacher would say, in the context of teaching on these significant mental health issues, that sexual preference was a choice and you could choose yourself into it and you could choose yourself out of it. The board president of the school pamphleted the entire staff and parent community with unkind articles at the peak of the debate about same-sex marriage and made it clear not only that the school's position was that marriage should only be between a man and a woman, but that there was little latitude for others to hold a different view, even as a private matter. Now, I've seen firsthand the significant effects on mental health that these issues um, bring to uh, students. It's significant that at the school that I taught at, two thirds of the school body, the student body, came from unchurched families, people who were not part of the religious community, but were simply sending their kids to a good local private school, and that 71% of their funding came from government sources. In my case, when I was challenged about my sexuality, I answered honestly, and then I was told that there was no place for me at the school in the following year. The connection was crystal clear. The testimony that you have received from others that this is not the case is simply not true. I was well regarded in that community amongst my students and my peers, and I was good at what I did. I never dishonoured my employer, and I regarded my private life as just that. My sexuality had, no, had nothing to do with my ability to do my job. As a member of the Liberal Party for nearly 30 years, I implore you either to abandon this bill or at least to fix the egregious loopholes that are going to permit discrimination against people like Karen and myself. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor. Can I um, thank you both for uh, presenting your uh, difficult personal stories today? Um, I just wanted to, uh, for the avoidance of doubt and conscious of time, just get on the record um, whether or not in both of your cases uh, you ever taught against the theology or ethos of the school. I'll, I'll feel that, and the answer is clearly no. You know, my ability to teach technology, which was my uh, key subject area, that and English, had nothing to do with my own views. I was not a flag waver. I am a member of the Liberal Party and a lo an elected local government representative. I think of myself as an upright citizen in my community. I never did anything to dishonour my employer, and yet this was grounds to exclude me from a sector that I'd worked in for 20 years. Karen? Uh, no, very much not. In fact, knowing that I am a gay woman, my faculty asked me to teach a core subject in biblical and theological foundations and ethics for um, counsellors and spiritual carers. So I was actually asked to teach theology and ethics because of my integrity and my faith. And I never under undermined the college's position at all, even when I was asked directly about um, same-sex relationships and LGBTIQ issues. 
explained the position of the college and that there's a spectrum of opinion within Christianity, but I certainly never undermined um, the views of the college. Okay, just final question, that's okay. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, do you think that there are other teachers who have been in your situation uh, who are unprepared for various understandable reasons to come forward and tell their stories? Yes. Uh, may, I, may I respond to that? Yes. In the time since I have come out publicly and particularly since my um, story was aired somewhat in the media, I've been approached by literally hundreds of teachers and students from Christian schools and Christian uh, religious institutions explaining to me either the trauma that they have faced as gay people who feel, or LGBTIQ people who feel forced to remain closeted in a very don't ask, don't tell environment. They've explained to me the trauma that they've faced psychologically and emotionally, the mental health challenges that they've faced. I've also had many of them, dozens of them tell me uh, about how they have been excluded from their school communities or fired from their jobs because of their gender identity or sexuality. Um, as well as others who have been dismissed because they got divorced or because they became single parents uh, or for a variety of reasons. So, Senator, permit me to concur. I agree with Karen that there are very many people and part of the difficulty is that employers will often obfuscate the reason that they're letting an employee go even when it is clear that it is because of either their religious conviction uh, or their sexuality. And my most important point is this. The provisions of this bill effectively empower those who want to put pressure on and ultimately purge people of a different religious conviction to themselves within religious communities. And worse, this bill um, would side in those debates with those who are less ecumenical, less moderate, less compassionate. And I don't think that the parliament should be weighing in and taking sides in what are, in many cases, doctrinal differences of opinion within faith communities. And if I, if I can add to that uh, as well, so, you asked about yes, the harm very being briefly, done. Yes, very briefly, Ms Pack. Sure. I just want to comment that we know from numerous studies throughout the world that um, people who are forced to remain closeted or feel that they need to remain closeted within their communities because of a fear of ostracism from their community, that has incredible mental health impacts. That has impacts on high rates of suicidal ideation and homelessness and mental distress. Um, and so to Senator Bragg's question, there are many people that continue to be closeted or hiding parts of themselves that are suffering incredible mental health damage. And I actually think that that should be a great concern of our, of our government and parliament, the ongoing harm that has been done by forcing people to remain closeted because of the harm, the detriment that they experience if they come out. And we should be concerned for the many, many queer young people of faith who are watching things like this play out and know what will happen to them if they are to come out because they see what's happened to me, to Nathan, to Steph Lance, to David, to Elise, to so many people that I could name. They're watching, they see, and it is doing them harm.